There's just a small sampling of a bunch of tracks here. The big obvious black bear tracks right there. And then these really nice looking mink tracks right here. Look at those. Looks like a gray fox over here. There's an otter. There's a deer. There's a dog. More black bear. Gray fox down there. Wow. Amazing. This is like treasure. So amongst all this variety of tracks, there's a very tiny, lightweight animal leaving tracks here. Let's go see what it is. Some of the tracks from this animal are super hard to see. There are these right here. Look at the tiny little claw marks there. And that's the only mark left by this animal. What is going on here? See the little tiny claw marks right here? Here's a squirrel, and the marks we're looking at are not the squirrel's marks because they're a little smaller, and they're paired. So see how the, uh, the tiny claw marks of this animal are paired together. It's not a gray fox, because here's a gray fox. So what's smaller than a gray fox and smaller than a squirrel that leaves paired asymmetrical tracks? Okay, so here we have two tracks from this small animal and they are paired side by side. That's the right one and this is the left one. Now these are the hind tracks. What you first notice about these tracks is that these claw marks are asymmetrically arranged. So if the animal is facing that direction, then those feet are sort of canted outwards at an angle. Whoops, drop the stick, there you go. Here's another stick. So the feet kind of cant outward at a little bit of an angle and uh, that also leads to that asymmetrical appearance. So you have four claws here on each one. And this animal weighs about two pounds, full grown. And it never leaves the edge of the brush. Its name is the brush rabbit. And brush rabbits are very cautious because they're really tiny cottontails. And they don't want to venture out from cover because they're prey for so many animals. So when they're moving, they're using a gate called a bound. And in the bounding gate, the hind feet provide the propulsion. So the animal will hop forward, landing with its front feet, which are located that way. And then the hind feet come around and land ahead of the front. These are the paired hind feet. And then the animal pushes off into the next stride by digging in with those hind feet and those claws. And it pushes forward and leaps into the, its next stride. So these are the paired hind tracks of a brush rabbit. They're really small because this animal is super tiny. There's the inch scale. And remember these tracks are splayed out so these toes are not held together because the animal is spreading them to get traction. So these are the paired hind tracks of a brush rabbit. And the entire trail width is just a little more than three inches. It's really small. So this tiny animal is so lightweight that the only thing that really makes an imprint from its tracks is normally the uh, claw marks. And so this is the typical appearance of brush rabbit tracks in a muddy riverbank environment. Um, it's wet sand at this point. It's not really mud so much. So the, uh, the tiny little animal doesn't make much of an imprint in this relatively firm substrate. So there you have it, the hind tracks of a brush rabbit. Remember, cottontail and uh, jackrabbit hind tracks will be asymmetrical like this. So if you imagine the line of travel being from the bottom of the screen towards the top, you can see that these are not symmetrically arranged.